Hello Internet and welcome to part 7 of my Inkscape video tutorial. Today I'm going to finish up covering everything with the filter editor. We're going to focus in on displacement map, morphology, image, and convolve matrix. And if you didn't watch part 6, I provide a link to it in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description for the video. And it's important to watch it because there's a little bit of a bug with filter editor that I show you how to fix in part 6. So if you have any problems, that's where to find your answer more than likely. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so here we are inside of Inkscape, and here is Filter Editor. Of course, we open that up by just going Filters, and then coming down here, and going Filter Editor, and it opens up. And we're going to get ourselves an image, and the first thing we're going to cover is Displacement Maps. And basically, a Displacement Map is just going to accept an image, and it's going to accept another image known as a Displacement Map, and that Displacement Map is going to define how the other image is warped. And I'll give you an example, and it'll make a 100% of sense. So just click on File, and then Import. And you can use regular graphics, you can use pictures, you can use whatever. Let's just come in here, and let's find something here real easy. So let's just say, I don't know, here's a veggie burger or a hamburger, whatever you want to call it. And let that be set for Embed, and hit OK. And there it is. And let's just enlarge this a little bit, so we'll be able to see it better. And this is an HD video, so if you can't see it, view it full screen. And we're going to be creating a new filter. So let's just come in here and hit New and there's that filter. Then we need to create our displacement map. Now I'm just going to draw a little rectangle over top of this picture of a hamburger or a veggie burger. And then I'm going to come up here to, and I'm going to show you how to do this with filters and not with filters in regards to generating the displacement map. So filters, image effects, and then let's just say film grain. You can use pretty much any of them. So there that is. Then we're going to take the film grain and throw it behind our little hamburger we have right here. going to select this guy. This is the filter we'll be working with. And I'm going to say that I want to link this image to the displacement map. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to find image. And I'm going to click on add effect. Make sure this is pointed to the source graphic. And then I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to find displacement map and add effect. And that is going to link all those up going to have to have the first little guy here pointing to the image and the second one pointing to the background image and scroll down here and basically what scale is going to do is define how much our image is going to be warped and the X displacement and Y displacement are going to define the color channels that are going to be warped. Now there is no transparency so I'm going to get rid of alpha and I'm just going to pick blue and green just for the heck of it and select filter of course put a little tick inside of there and you're going to see that the filter is coming through or the displacement map is coming through and distorting that. And if we heighten it, it's going to distort it more and more and more and more. So that is how we would use a filter displacement map to distort our hamburger. Let's come in here and let's just remove that all together. And now I'm going to show you how to distort it using not a filter. Don't know how to say that. And we can just get rid of this. Also remove, eh, what the heck, let's get rid of that as well. I also received some questions in regards to changing objects into patterns. So in this situation, I'm going to go the long way here and I'm going to cover that as well. So let's just zoom out of here. And basically, I'm going to create a displacement map just from using regular images. So let's say that I want to create a sort of ripple effect. Come in here, object path, and then I'm going to need stroke and fill. So just click on that guy and that's going to open up. There it is. And let's say I want to do a radial gradient on this and let's also come in here and I'm gonna say edit I want to edit this gradient and let's just come in there and let's change this well let's go add stop take a look at the skin click on that change that to a full alpha come in here change this to full alpha and I'm just messing around with gradients come back inside of there and let's raise this way way up to black and I'm just sort of doing this out of my head or to white and there you can see I have created sort of a droplet and that's perfectly fine. Now what I'm going to do is make a couple copies of that, stack them on top of each other and make something that's going to end up being a pattern. It's going to be big enough for this. So let's just do copy and a control alt or control option paste on top and let's enlarge this, throw it behind, there it is and let's do that again. Copy, control, option paste on top and let's enlarge it again and throw it behind and then let's do another copy control alt option paste and I'm doing this for a very specific example the person watching this will realize what I'm doing and it doesn't hurt if you don't know okay so this should be big enough to cover our whole entire hamburger I'm gonna hit control G to group this 
Yes, it does cover the whole entire thing. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to Object, and I'm going to come down to Pattern, and I'm going to say Objects to Pattern, like that. And there, that's going to be a pattern now. Now I can come in here and draw my rectangle over top of my hamburger, like that. There that is. So I'm going to convert this into a pattern. And you can see, there is our pattern. Then I'm going to come over and click on the Node tool. There's the Node tool. And I'm going to move this around. And basically how it's going to be moved around is with this little X that's sticking way out here. So I'm just going to move it into position, and that looks perfectly fine. Now you can see that a pattern, or just a regular old graphic, is going to be used as our displacement map this time. And let's just come in here and enlarge that. And there we go. Take this, throw it behind, just like we did before. And we're going to get our filter editor again. And I'm going to drag this up here so that it fits. And there we go. Come in here, hit Add New. Select this guy over here. Just like we did before, we're going to come in here, Displacement Map, and we're going to go Image and Add Effect. And it's pointing to the source graphic. And then I'm going to come in again and Image. And I'm going to pick Displacement Map this time, just like we did before, and hit Add Effect. And there that is. Drag this guy over once again to the background image. There that is. Turn on our filter. I'm going to change that to blue, change this to green. And I'm going to start distorting it. As you can see, it's being distorted on top of that image that is in the background. So whatever, I just pulled that right out of my head as an example. You can use all kinds of other filters and squigglies and all kinds of other things as displacement maps. But there is an example, or actually two examples, of using displacement maps. I'm going to do something kind of cool. I'm going to cover morphology. Basically what it is used for is for thinning or swelling an object. Let's keep our hamburger here and let's just show you an effect. Like let's say I wanted to create sort of like an underpainting sort of image. So I just select my image that I have here. I'm going to come into filter, hit add new, and then I'm going to find morphology. There's morphology, hit add effect. Very, very easy to work with. Now what I'm going to be able to do is either pick a road or dilate. Let's try a road and then change the radius and that's going to affect our image. Of course make sure that you have the filter selected and as you can see with a road it's sort of going to darken it and with a dilate picked on there, there it is, you can see that it is adding sort of a sparkle effect to it. That might seem worthless but I'm going to show you something really cool. There's sort of like your underpainting sort of thing or your fade or whatever you want to refer to. But what's really cool about this is I can actually do a neon type of sign using morphology and it's very cool. How I'm going to demonstrate this, I'm going to draw myself a rectangle on our screen and let's make it black and then I'm going to come in here and get some text and let's just say neon and let's say that I want this to be bright red right like that and then let's increase the size of it so that you can see it on the screen there it is and I'm actually going to make this stroke by holding down shift and clicking on red be red and then the regular fill is not going to be red I'm in here get this and go to stroke width stroke style width and let's change this to something like nine there it is nice and easy to see on the screen then I'm gonna add a whole bunch of different filters some that you've seen before and morphology which you've kind of seen okay so open up the filter editor I'm gonna come in and hit new then I'm gonna add a whole bunch of effects so we're gonna have the color matrix in here so that we can have the pixels sort of manipulate the images that are around or the other pixels that are around them so come up to color matrix and I covered color matrix in the last tutorial so let's just say add Add effect and I want this to be pretty even the way the distortions are going to occur so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this which is the red to 3 and the blue also to 3 and this guy also to 3 and then change this to negative 2 which is going to equal out to 1 3 minus 2 is equal to 1 and there we go and there we go right like that there we go perfect now what I'm going to do is use the morphology, and what the morphology is going to do is, is, is going to use Gaussian blurs to warp out and create the neon effect. So let's just come in here and say Gaussian blur, add, and then Gaussian blur again and add. There we go. I actually forgot to put the morphology after color matrix, which is where I want it. No problem. Just click on morphology, hit add effect, come up here, grab it, and drag it into position. Perfect. And then what we need to do is merge 
both of the Gaussian blurs which are going to give us sort of a glowing effect. And to do that of course we're going to use merge and add effect. And this is basically going to merge the Gaussian blurs as well as our well, the source graphic is going to be linked to with a second Gaussian blur, right like that. Morphology is going to be directly connected to color matrix, and I'll show you what that's going to do in a second. For this Gaussian blur right here, I'm going to come down inside of here, and I'm going to set this to right around 6. Good enough. Going to be pointing to the morphology just like it is. This guy's going to be pointing to the source graphic. So we're going to not make much of a change here and just let that be one, no problem. And then we need to use the merge to merge both of the Gaussian blurs. I'm up here, link to that guy, link to this guy, right like that. Now when you do it, you know, let's just click on filter. You're going to see that there is a slight blur there. We're going to have to go into morphology and now we're going to be able to dilate it and create the effect that we are looking for. So just come down here to dilate click on that and there you go it's not doing anything yet but as we increase the radius you can see that really easily by combining just a whole bunch of these different filter editors we're going to bring across the idea of neon so kind of cool so now let's go and take a look at convolve matrix now convolve matrix is going to be used for blurring embossing sharpening highlighting of edges and a whole bunch of other different things and to demonstrate this i'm actually going to import a pdf something else i got asked about so file and let's say import and let's find myself a pdf so and there's a pdf double click on that there it is hit ok and there i just imported myself a little man now i'm going to be playing around with this now basically the convolve matrix is going to take multiple different i'm not going to get into the complexities it's basically going to take multiple different functions and make changes to other pixels that are around focused on pixels you're going to see again don't worry about the intricacies I'm going to show you a whole bunch of examples and then you'll be able to play with those examples to better understand exactly how it works. Basically what it's going to do is it's going to take pixels around a target pixel and perform calculations to create new colors just to keep it nice and simple. So if we come in here we're going to go and create ourselves a new filter and convolve matrix there it is and hit add effect and there you go. I'm going to go over these here real quickly. Basically the size is going to define the size of our matrix. The target, this guy right here, is going to define the x and y coordinates for the matrix, but they're not going to have major effects on anything, so you can pretty much ignore those. And then what you're going to do is change kernel values to define changes in pixel colors. So this is going to be one of the major parts right here, the most important part. And pretty much what you need to know, the most important part about messing around here, is if you use the same non-zero values for all of these different guys here, you're going to receive consistent changes or warps or whatever to your said image or the graphic in this situation. And then after all the numbers in the kernel matrix, that's what this guy's called right here, are going to be added together they're going to be divided by our divisor that we have right here and if the divisor is the sum of the values then I, once again you're going to know that your color changes are going to be consistent across your image and then the bias this guy right here or this little slider right here as it is decreased it's going to make changes to the graphic image you're focused on and as it increases it's going to make changes to the area that surrounds your focused on graphic once again better to actually look at this and see it working so let's say that we wanted to blur consistently our little businessman here and let's just enlarge him so you'll be able to see him really good on the screen there he is well, leaving this set for 3.3 three, makes a lot of sense because we want to do a consistent sort of blur across the whole entire thing. Target, we can just pretty much ignore and just let it be 0.0. Zero, zero. That's perfectly fine. Remember, we want consistency in the changes. And remember I said non-zero values. So let's just go in here and change all of this to 1. And then you're going to see, already you can see that the little guy is blurred. And make sure that you have this checked up here. A lot of people forget that. And then as we move the divisor, you're going to see that our little man slowly sort of disappears or is blurred. And then, like I said, with the bias, as we 
decrease this, it's going to make the changes occur with our graphic. So there you go, there's the graphic slowly disappearing. And you can see all the different effects you can get here with just a simple slider. And as, as it is increased, it is also going to be changing the area around your graphic. And you can see there, very easily, we achieved sort of a cutout effect. And that's what I'm saying about this. Basically my whole idea here is to show you the basics of what is going on so that you'll be able to come in here and properly play with this stuff. Because that's really the way you're going to find new things is through playing. And then the edge mode, forgot to talk about that, what this is going to do is extend the effect across the image or define how it is going to be extended across the image. Oh, and also preserve alpha is going to define whether transparency is enforced or not. So there you go, covered every single one of those tools. Now let's say that we wanted to come in here and emboss this. Well, I'm going to leave these set for 3.3, let this set to 0, no problem. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change this to 8 or something around that area. And then for each one of these ones, I'm going to change them to negatives. So I'll change that to negative, change that to negative, negative, and there we go, right like that. Now we can come in here and you can already see it looks a little bit funky. We can come into the divisor and let's raise this guy up to something around, well, there's 10. Let's try doing something around the five area right there. And then remember we wanna change, since we wanna emboss this, we want to affect the graphical area, the white area that surrounds our businessman. So I'm gonna go into the bias area right here and increase that, that's how we affect everything else here and let's just come in here and go 0.6 and there you can see that we embossed the guy and we can also change these values here well that's a little bit too extreme but we can change the divisor here just by dragging it and get other really cool effects just by dragging a little slider so that's really cool could also do edge detection again I'm gonna leave this 3 3 let this be 0 let the kernel be exactly the way it is and then change our divisor to around, I don't know, 4.8. As you can tell, I've done this before. And then change our bias to one. And there you can see you're getting sort of an edge detection on that guy. And we can move this around, take this down just a little bit. And just all the neat little things you can do here just by playing with this a little bit. We raise this up a little bit more, take this in a little bit more. And as you can see, I'm just getting really cool effects just by moving this slider just a tiny, tiny little hair. You could also come in here and create a motion blur. In this situation, I want everything consistent from the left to the right, so I'm gonna go five, and I'm gonna do this with a one. Since we're going to do a motion blur from one direction to the next, leave the target to be zero, and there we go. I was just showing that. Change all of these guys to one, every one of them. There we go. And then change my divisor inside of here to 4.0, and my bias to 0.0, .0 since I'm not doing anything with it and you can see that there's sort of a motion type of blur to that guy. And then finally, how about we sharpen everything? In this situation, we're gonna go back to 3-3, three, three, right like that, target zero, just like we had before. And then with this guy, what we're gonna do, let's change this to zero, and just a negative one, zero, negative one, five, negative one. I think you're getting the gist of what I'm doing here. Negative one, and then zero again. Then I'm gonna come in and get the divisor, have that be set to one and the bias to zero. And there you can see that we have sort of a sharpen or a sharpen edge type of look for our little man we got there. So there are a whole bunch of different ways to play around with displacement maps and image and morphology and convolve matrix. It's a lot of fun to come in here and sort of explore with it and check out what can be done. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.